everyone. Hey, how you doing? It's Matt Sella. Today, we are doing another spoiler talk episode for the Amazon original called Invincible. Season 1, episode 4, dubbed Neil Armstrong, Eat Your Heart Out. That's right, folks. We're going to talk more about this adult animated cartoon about superheroes being violent and realistic in a way or something. I don't know. Anywho. I'm joined here with me, a good friend of mine. You know him. You love him. He loves to watch them DuckTales animated cartoons on the Disney Channel, as well as superheroes getting into a bloody pulp. That's right, folks. Joined via satellite radio, it's Mark, a.k.a. Marcello, a.k.a. Mark the Magnificent. How you doing out there, Mark? Look, all I'm saying is, Matt, I don't know why I'm in a tomb in Egypt, but here we are. All right. I have a feeling it's going to be important in the later game, but right now I don't know why I'm here. It's amazing you even have reception in there. Uh, well, that's what all those, you know, hieroglyphs were for. It was, uh, you know, ye old Wi-Fi passwords. They were very long back in those days, you see. That's right, folks. They had the Gigaport down to a T. Which is crazy because I'm pretty sure they're not on T-Mobile. But I don't think I'm on AT&T right now with this. I'm, I'm not sure what the ancient Egyptians used for their Wi-Fi. Well, either way, we got you on the line and we're excited to talk about this episode. Well, before I let Mark out of the tomb to talk about this episode and give his opinion on it, may I remind you folks to like videos and reviews like this that we do on this YouTube channel of mine. And also, if you like watching guys make animation, you should probably check out my Twitch channel, where usually every Saturday, around 1 o'clock Pacific time, I like to do a little animating in Toon Boom Harmony, just for fun. So, if you want to check that out, check out the links in the description below to head to my Twitch channel. Without further ado, Mark, why don't you let the fine folks know, what is this episode all about? Well, I'm glad you asked, Matt. This episode was filled with a lot of drama. You see, most importantly, Olga, Red Rush's wife, is trying to sell her house in this economy. I can't tell you how stressful that is, especially when she's moving back to Russia. It's just, oh, it's such a mess. And then, you know, there's escrow and, you know, will they sign on the dotted line and everything? And then, you know, the house isn't exactly uh, pristine, a bit of a fixer upper. Oh, but wait, there's some, uh, I guess, uh, hold on here. Uh, something about uh, uh, Mark goes to Mars to help with a Martian landing. There's these things called the sea quids. Uh, that doesn't sound very important. At one point, there was an Egyptian tomb. It's weird how uh, art imitates life. I think this uh, series might be taking uh, inspiration from my own personal endeavors. I'm going to have to probably sue. And um, well, I guess, uh, okay, we'll, co we'll cover the, the sea plot, I guess. So yeah, Cecil asks Nolan to escort the Mars expedition for humanity because humanity kind of needs a win right now after losing their heroes. But Nolan refuses because he knows that Cecil's kind of at least suspicious of him. I don't want to entirely commit to being on to him for killing the Guardians, but he's on to him about killing the Guardians. And as a result, you know, Mark volunteers while, you know, also trying to balance his social life and everything. The Martians are having a problem because of these things called the sequids that are basically parasitic face huggers which if i can interject a little bit mark it kind of reminded me of those uh purple starfish mind controller things from the dc comics in a way there's a lot of things in this series that remind me of things from dc comics by the way matt but um yeah no that i thought of that and um there's a few things they remind me of honestly i i kind of even was like oh it's like uh like a metroid or something i don't know anyway but uh yeah he meets the emperor of mars who is you know with the exception of having to execute the astronauts because humans are the most susceptible to these sea quibs a uh, squid it says sea quibs but like i feel like it's just like someone who didn't know how to spell squids wrote this on the thing i don't know anyway the sea squids no wait the squids one of them at the very least a martian has found his way onto the ship as they flee back to earth and one of the the marsh and the human left behind is now infected by the sea quid and it looks like it's going to just totally ruin mars and um yeah that's really about it by the looks of it all also robot is up to doing some suspicious stuff and has stolen some of Rexplosion's blood for some creepy dude in the test tube who uh we have identified thanks to the wiki as a mr rudy connors who proclaims that phase one is complete also my main man dark blood got 
banished back to hell but also the wikipedia i'm not even not, i'm not even like on like a you know invincible wiki this is just in the wiki description of the episode it looks like dark blood left his notepad on earth which will still allow him to have some presence which is cool we do see that in a end credit shot sort of and i don't know matt am i forgetting anything no i say this episode is pretty chock full of things i mean aside from debbie trying to rekindle the relationship she had with nolan trying to come to a point where everyone who is suspicious of him doing the murders was hoping that Nolan is still an honest man. They kind of try to, you know, build that trust back up considering how like tense things are and where you think things are turning out pretty good. Maybe things are not as cut and dry as Debbie is hoping. Not even close, Matt. Not even close. So we got some of that going on and to kind of cut in a little bit more to you, Mark, the more I watched this episode, the more I thought my theory that I made in the last review might be more true than I anticipated, but I've been wrong many times before. Well, this is true. You're quite famous for being wrong before, Uh Matt. Shots fired. But to kind of stand up what my theory was in the last review, if you haven't heard me before, based off how the murders have been going, I'm anticipating that Omni-Man, aka Nolan, aka his people, which I do not know how to pronounce, are in fact conquerors instead of saviors to like lesser evolved species around the universe. And in a way, Nolan is trying to gain the trust of Earth humans so that he can conquer them in a quote-unquote peaceful manner and that the other guardians of the globe were a threat to his desired conquering plans. And he's hoping that his son, Mark Grayson, who just gained his powers, that Mark will help Nolan take over the Earth in his peaceful ways. But because he was born of a human mother, I have a feeling it's going to come down to Mark trying to decide whether to side with humans or his heritage. And I feel like this episode really started to continue to build on that, especially since Nolan was telling his son, you don't have to go to Mars. There's no real point to doing this. The Earth needs you. You need to train more. Who cares about them? But then his mom was like, well, no, you got to decide what kind of hero you want to be. It's your decision. It's on you. And I don't know if I missed it, Mark, but I don't think there was a scene of Omni-Man reacting to what Debbie said, but I have a feeling that he's probably like god damn it there wasn't a direct reaction but yeah i I imagine that was the case no problem there i think he was kind of like but generally speaking i feel like that's going to be the end game of this series oh absolutely i I think so and you know just for the record once again we have not read the comics for this one we are going in purely based on the show's uh presentation of the narrative and characters so we don't know so no spoilers but um yeah i think you've touched on something earlier matt with how much happened in this episode how many different little things i will say unlike the first three episodes and you mentioned that maybe it was a victim of you know us binging it you know that kind of culture versus just episode by episode this episode i felt had the least amount of pacing issues for me and felt like the most honestly enjoyable and easy just to watch ride out of the four episodes altogether with the exception of the egypt thing which i'm again assuming has to be a setup for something else that just didn't really have any bearings right now i actually really liked this one this actually made me way more optimistic for the series as a whole i think we both gave the first three episodes kind of a you know we're interested opinion but this i think gave me much more confidence with the series moving forward i think so too and we got snippets of other things that are happening the multiple plots that are going about with Mahler and him making his new brother. But we also got Robot feeding this thing in a tube, which I didn't know its name was Cody, but I guess that's its name, according to the wiki you read. There's a lot of things going on here, and I'm quite curious to see what the focus plot is going to be, aside from Omni-Man revealing that he did the murders. And which quick thing I'm going to say regarding that mystery, I do believe Damien Darkblood, that's not the last we'll see of him. I'm 100% certain he's going to come back. I mean, that'd be such a terrible, terrible, terrible use of uh, Clancy Brown. Why would you why would you get rid of Clancy Brown? Oh, he is based on Hellboy. OK, the wiki. Thank you, wiki. There's so many characters that are based on things I like kind of some of them are, de- are things where like, is this person based off this or is it just such a, you know, kind of. I don't want to say generic, but, you know, common used trope that it just kind of feels like that. Okay, apparently he is loosely based on Hellboy and Rorschach, whoever Rorschach is. Oh, it's, oh, oh, I know who Rorschach is. He's, uh, yeah, he's from the oh, Watchmen series. Right. Oh, God, how did I forget the Watchmen series? Oh, okay, cool. You know what? That's why I like him so much. But to kind of get back to the points you were saying, the pacing, 
yes, I agree with you. I think the pacing is better in this episode. I don't know if I liked it perfectly so because this episode did feel short to me, but maybe that's just because I was expecting so much information like from the last three episodes, but at the same time they were binged. So of course there was a lot of information there, but either way, I definitely think episode four is probably the strongest of the four episodes right now. Ironically, despite dropping an F-bomb and actually having little to no blood really present at least as far as i can remember this actually felt the most i guess quote unquote adult or mature to me because i don't know there's a certain point where you're just when you're swearing all the time and there's just all this blood not necessarily that the other episodes did that but like that just kind of comes across more immature to me than anything it's kind of a problem i have sometimes when we use the term you know adult cartoon or adult animation and it's kind of i don't want to say the lowest denominator but just like you know this isn't you know ad- i don't know adult adult but like this felt the most adult to me ironically i don't know maybe i'm overthinking it thematically speaking it deals with actual adult issues and social interactions that don't pander i think that's essentially what we're going with here yeah because like especially if like especially with, like when i was a younger younger man because i am still young um i uh, probably would have been like oh man all this blood is so cool and everything but like you know you get a little older and you're just like okay it's a lot of blood you know what what what's what else you got here like it's just blood but um yeah, no. Overall, I really liked this episode. It kind of gave me renewed interest in the series in many ways. I definitely echo a lot of those statements. So I am looking forward to what happens next in the next episode. And it looks like we're, we just hit the halfway mark. So we got about four more episodes to go. Let's see the plot thicken. Now we got till the end of the month. So uh, hang tight, folks. We'll be seeing it through. Well, folks, you heard our opinion, but now we want to hear yours. Let us know in the comment section below. What did you think of this episode of Invincible Season? Season 1, Episode 4, Neil Armstrong, Eat Your Heart Out. Sounded like an Animaniacs episode. It almost did. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Share your thoughts. Join the conversation. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, ring that bell to be notified when new videos drop. And if you want to support me directly, consider going to my Patreon. Watch me stream animation on Twitch. Or do a one-time donation at my Streamlabs. Links are in the description below. This is Matt Seller. And this is Mark. Thanking you all for two...